All right, guys, in this video, we're going to talk about gas stoichiometry. We're going to combine uh, almost everything that we've learned in chemistry so far. We've been studying the gas laws and the ideal gas law, and in, in, in last chapter, we studied and reviewed stoichiometry. So now we're going to combine the two and use the ideal gas law and stoichiometry in, uh, in a single problem. So if you're watching the video, please follow along with your guided notes. We're in chapter two, guided notes, gas stoichiometry. All right, so if you've got a road map, it, uh, it could help you today. So if you've got a road map, a periodic table, I'm going to get those things out. You're definitely going to need a calculator, so make sure you have a calculator. Okay, this first problem here, under gas stoichiometry, it says use the ideal gas law to predict the volume of one mole of gas at zero degrees Celsius and one atmosphere of pressure. On these problems, I always like to underline what it is that they give us. They're giving us one mole, 273.2 Kelvin, and one atmosphere. And it wants us to predict the new volume, or to find the volume of this gas. Okay, so we're using the ideal gas law. Somebody tell me what that equation is. PV equals NRT. Good. PV equals NRT. Now we're just going to plug in the variables that we have. Did it give us pressure? Yeah, it said 1 atm, so I'm going to put 1 in for pressure. Did it tell us volume? No, it didn't. Uh, that's what we're supposed to find. Okay, so I'm going to keep it as V. It's equal to, and is what, guys, in the ideal gas law? Moles. Number of moles. Did it tell us? Well, yeah. yeah, one mole here. So one, or it says one mole here. So one goes in for N. Now R, R is called the universal gas constant. It always equals 0 0.08206. Okay? So 0 0.08206. And that's as long as we're using atmospheres of pressure, liters for volume, moles, and Kelvin as a temperature. All right, so that's R. Now let's plug in T. What does T equal in this problem? Yeah, let's make sure we're in Kelvin, so it's 273.2. All right, now we have an equation with one unknown. To get V by itself, what would you do? Hopefully, you would divide by one on both sides. Okay, over here, one divided by one is one. So the volume of that gas, grab a calculator. How many of you guys are getting that volume is equal to 22.4? How many of you guys got that? 22.4. And it's a volume, so what units is it? Liters. Okay, there's our answer. Okay. That's going to be a very important number in this chapter going forward. One mole of gas at zero degrees Celsius and one atmosphere of pressure is always going to equal 22.4, and it doesn't matter what gas we're talking about, it could be any gas. And so, um, yeah, the answer is 22.4 liters. Okay, that's what we call molar volume, okay? Molar volume is the volume of one mole of gas at zero degrees Celsius and one atmosphere of pressure. And it's equal to 22.4 liters. Yep, you need to write that down. This is where need to write something. So there's a, there's a term in chemistry that we see quite a bit. It's called standard temperature and pressure. Standard temperature and pressure. It's kind of long to say, so chemists will abbreviate that as STP. We're going to see this a lot in the next couple of chapters as well. STP means standard temperature and pressure. And what are the conditions at STP? Well, you have to be at zero degrees Celsius and one atmosphere of pressure. What degrees Kelvin is zero degrees Celsius? 273 Kelvin. So if we're at 273 Kelvin and one atmosphere of pressure, we are at standard temperature and pressure. That's STP. 
Okay, so we have a new conversion factor. The molar volume of an ideal gas is 22.4 liters at STP. So here is our new conversion factor. Please make sure you make note of this. It's in the guided notes. One mole of any gas. It might be oxygen, it might be nitrogen, it could be carbon dioxide. One mole of any gas at STP is equal to 22.4 liters. So let's get an idea of what 22.4 liters is. It's about equal to the gas contained in a, in a large beach ball. Okay, and so this is a picture of me I took on the beach. Uh, and if you look at the beach ball, this would be about 22.4 liters. So it's a large beach ball, 22.4 liters. You guys don't believe me? That's, that's me? Nope. I think he looks like me. Okay, number 12. Practice problem number 12. So to finish up this video, I've got three practice problems. Okay, please watch as we go through these problems. Write them down in your notes, and we'll be able to get this. It's not that hard. Okay, practice problem number 12 says a sample of nitrogen gas has the volume of 1.75 liters at STP. How many moles of nitrogen are present? Okay, now this is a gas law problem. So what should I write down first? What's the ideal gas law? PV equals NRT. Now let's see if we can, if we can uh, use the ideal gas law here. Okay? I always like to underline what it gives us. So underline. 1.75 liters. Underline STP and circle moles of nitrogen. That's what we're supposed to find. Now, by STP, what does this mean? Standard temperature and pressure. Standard temperature and pressure. So, what is the standard temperature? Uh, 273, Kelvin. 273 Kelvin. And what's the standard pressure? Uh, One atmosphere. Okay. Good. So let's see if we can solve for the number of moles that are present. Okay. Can we use the ideal gas law? Yeah. yeah, let's see if we can. What's the pressure here? One ATM. What's the volume? 1.75 liters is equal to, what does N mean? Moles, so we don't know moles. I'm going to keep it as N. What's R? Okay. And what's the temperature at STP? Yeah, 273 Kelvin. You always have to be in Kelvin. Okay. All right, so now if we're going to solve for the number of moles, we want to get N by itself. What should we do? Divide by 0.0826. Good. We're going to divide by both of these numbers here to get rid of it on the right side. But if I divide by these numbers on the right, do I have to do the same thing on the left? Yes. Yes. Okay, over on the right side, since we're dividing by, by the same number, they can cancel out because it equals 1. So the number of moles is equal to 1 times 1.75 divided by the ideal or the universal gas constant and then divided by 273. Let's see what we get. So I'm getting that the number of moles is equal to 0 0.078. Raise your hand if you got that. Okay, good job. And M stands for what? Moles. So we're going to write the units. I want you to put moles. And what gas were we talking about? Nitrogen. Nitrogen. N2. Okay. Now that's one way to solve it. Could there be another way to solve this? I'm sure there is. If it's at STP, don't we know how many moles are in a certain volume? Okay, so I'm going to show you a different way to solve this problem. 
But I always want you to be aware that you can use the ideal gas law every time. Now, here's the caveat with this problem. It has to be at STP for this to work. But we learned that one mole at STP is equal to 22.4 liters. So we're going to start with what we, with a volume that we started with, 1.75 liters, and put it over one. Okay? We're going to put it over one. Now, if liters is on top, what has to be on bottom? Oh, liters. Liters. And what are we trying to go to? 22. We want to get to moles. Moles. Okay. Well, one mole at STP equals how many liters? 22.4. And so can we just cancel out the liters and it's left with moles? Yeah. What's, what is that? 1.75. 1.07. 0.07. 0.07. So it's equal to 0 0.078. And we're, our units here are moles of what? N2. Of N2. So is there two ways to solve this problem? Yeah. yeah. If you recognize that you're at STP and we know the number of moles, then we can or, or the volume, we can go using this, using this new conversion factor, we can solve this problem. Two ways to get to the same answer, right guys? Okay. But make sure, if you're going to use this conversion factor right here, that you are at STP, because that only works when you are at STP. All right, good problem. Let's see if we got it right. This is giving it to us in scientific notation. To the minus 2, we'd have to move the decimal two times to the left. And so 0 0.078 is what we got. We're right. Okay, I've got a couple more practice problems. Let's do practice problem 13. Okay, let's read it, uh, try to understand what's going on here. It says quick lime, which is calcium oxide, is produced by the thermal decomposition of calcium carbonate, CaCO3. Calculate the volume of CO2 at STP produced from the decomposition of 152 grams of calcium carbonate by the reaction, and it gives us the reaction here. Okay, so where to start? First of all, do you guys remember from last year what a decomposition reaction is? Yes, it breaks apart. It breaks apart, right? Yeah, when things decompose, they break apart. And so we have one reactant and it's breaking into how many products? Two. Two. So it's a decomposition. So it says it was a thermal, a thermal decomposition. What does that mean? It means if you heat this up, if you heat calcium uh, carbonate up, it will break apart into the two products here. Okay. All right. Now I want to underline what it gives us. What information did it give us? Well, we're at STP. Underline that. Does that tell us the temperature and pressure? Yeah. What is the temperature? 273. 273 Kelvin. What's the pressure going to be? 1 atm. One atm. Okay, always note that. And what else did it give us? Grams of calcium carbonate. And what does it want us to find? What should we circle? Volume. Volume of CO2. So I'm going to circle that. All right, now I'm kind of lost. Well, I'm not lost. I know how to do it. But where would you guys start? Good. If it gives us grams, guys, what can we do with that? So we got 152 grams of this guy. Yeah, the one thing that we need to do, because we're really looking for the volume here, right? Volume. I can figure out the volume if I know the number of moles. So I need to know moles of CO2. Can I go from 152 grams of the reactant and figure out how many moles of product that will make? Okay, yeah. that's our plan. So how do we start the stoichiometry here? Good, 152 grams of CaCO3 all over 1. Okay, if you've got a road map, great, you can use it. I'll allow you to use it. But hopefully we're getting to the point where we don't need that roadmap anymore. Okay? Here's what I always do. Just make a new conversion factor. 
If grams of calcium carbonate's on top, what's got to go down here? Same thing. CaCO3 goes here. And we're trying to go to moles of calcium carbonate, so I'm going to put moles of calcium carbonate on the top. Well, in one mole of calcium carbonate, what's its molar mass? We need to look that up on the periodic table. So we've got one calcium. Calcium is, is how many grams? 40. A carbon is 12 grams, so 40 plus 12. And then we've got three oxygen. Oxygen by itself is 16, so we're going to add 16 three times. What are you guys getting for the molar mass? 100 grams, exactly. Okay. And so that gets me to moles of calcium carbonate. Now I need to go across the road map and do the mole ratio. If moles of calcium carbonate's on top, what's going on, what's going on bottom? Moles of calcium carbonate. What product are we trying to go to? CO2. So I'm going to put moles of CO2 on the top. Where do I get these numbers from, guys? Balanced. balanced. We've got to make sure it's balanced. How many calciums? One here, one here. How many carbons? One and one. I've got three oxygens. Well, there's one and there's two. Are we balanced? Yes. So how many moles of calcium carbonate do I have? One. It's no number, but it's implied one. How many moles of CO2? Just one. Now, can I stop there if I wanted to find moles of CO2? Yeah. Yep, because as you'll notice, I want you to cross out your units here. Everything else cancels out. Times everything across the top. 152 times 1 times 1 is 152. Times everything on the bottom. 1 times 100 times 1 is 100. What's 152 divided by 100? Good. 1.52. And what's my units going to be? moles of CO2. Okay. Now, since it's at STP, can I use that conversion factor which says that one mole is equal to 22.4 liters? Yeah. yeah, we're at STP, so I can use that conversion factor. So let's do that, okay? Because we want to find the volume of CO2. So if I put this over one, and I make that new conversion factor. If moles of CO2 is on top, what's got to go on the bottom? Moles of CO2. We're trying to go to, to volume of CO2, so liters of CO of CO2. It's got to go on top. That's a C. That's CO2. Anyway. Okay, here's my conversion factor. Let's plug it in right there. How many moles of CO2? One. In one mole of CO2, how many liters is it? 22.4 liters. Okay. Good job. And now my moles of CO2 is going to cancel out, and I'm left with volume of CO2. So we just take 1.52 times it by 22.4. Are you guys getting 34? 0.05? Zero five. And what's my units going to be? Liters. liters of what? CO2. Okay, please put the units. Tell me what you're talking about. Okay, good job. It's just one extra step with our stoichiometry, right? We're, we've just learned one, one more conversion factor. In order to use it, though, what conditions do you have to be in? Standard temperature and pressure. Can't emphasize that enough. Okay. All right, let's see if we got it right. Uh, 34.1, yeah, they just rounded that up. So, very good. So that's pretty useful information for a chemist, right? If we start with 152 grams of it, heat it up, we, we're forming a gas here. We can actually tell how much gas we're gonna form, which is incredibly useful for a chemist. Okay, very good. Now I wanted to throw in a problem that's not at STP. So number 14 here is not at STP. So can we use the one mole is equal to 22.4 liters? Nope, do not. 
It's not an STP, so we can't use that anymore. So let's go through a problem and see how we'd solve it now. Okay, it's a big problem. Let's read through it and um, see what we can do. A sample of methane gas, which is CH4. Uh, methane gas is also called natural gas. This is a lot of what a lot of us use to heat our houses with. Okay, um, so methane gas CH4 having a volume. Okay, let's underline what it gives us. 2.8 liters at 25 degrees Celsius and 1.65 atmospheres. Okay, that methane was mixed with a sample of oxygen gas having a volume of 35 liters at 31 degrees Celsius and 1.25 atmospheres of pressure. Then it says the mixture was then ignited to form carbon dioxide and water. Calculate the volume of CO2, so that's what we want to find, the volume of CO2, formed at a pressure of, of 2.5 atmospheres and a temperature of 125 degrees Celsius. Okay, wow. There's a lot going on, right? Who's lost? Yeah, there's a lot going on. Let me help you through this one. This is a difficult problem. There's a chemical reaction taking place. I think we should write the chemical equation first. What are the reactants that we have? CH4, which is methane. And what are we reacting methane with? O2, O2 oxygen. Yeah, oxygen is diatomic, so we've got to make sure there's a 2 right there. And it says it forms carbon dioxide and water. So we have the arrow. What's carbon dioxide? CO2. CO2. And everybody knows water, right? H2O. Now, is that balanced? No. no. Let's check the carbons. One and one, are they balanced? No. Yep. How about the hydrogens? Four and two. How would I balance it? We need two waters there, right? Okay, now let's check our oxygens. We got two on the left. We got, so far on the right, we got two and then two more. So I got four on the right, but two on the left. What, how do I fix it? Yeah, we need two oxygen molecules as well. Now, is that balanced? It is. So that's a good place to start. What kind of reaction is this, guys? We learned it last year. That's a combustion reaction. Yeah. Okay. In your uh, furnace at your house, this is what's happening. You're taking methane gas, you're igniting it, reacting with oxygen, and you're forming CO2 and water. Um, so that's the reaction that's going on. Okay, now I'm still lost. Now what do we do? What step would you guys do? Okay, we want to find the volume of CO2. So we really want to find the volume here. We don't know its volume. Now it's a gas law problem. Could I use the ideal gas law to find the volume of CO2? Couldn't we just say that PV is equal to nRT? and solve for the volume of carbon dioxide? Yeah. Okay, let's see if we can do that. What's the pressure of CO2 when it was formed? 2.5 atmospheres, so let's try it, 2.5. The volume is what we're looking for. We don't know it yet, so I'm just gonna call it V. Do we have moles? Dang it, didn't give us moles. So it didn't give us moles, so we got N here. Do we know R? Yes. And do we know temperature? Yes. Temperature is 125 degrees Celsius. What is that in Kelvin? 398. 398? Thanks, Ted. So 398. OK, can I solve an equation with two unknowns? No. Can't. So there's got to be some way through this problem that we can solve for moles of CO2. Stoichiometry. Yeah, that's why this, this video is called gas stoichiometry, right? Oh, wow, this is going to be a big problem, right? So, I need to find the moles of this guy, of methane. I need to find the moles of oxygen. And then which one's going to run out first? Did we learn how to do that, guys? What was it called? 
the limiting reactant. I'm dropping this class. <laughs> I'm not joking. Yeah. This is a good problem because we have to we have to go back and use all of our, our skills in chemistry to solve this problem. I love chemistry. Isn't chemistry awesome? Oh, I thought chemistry was fun until I actually learned that I have to do this again. That was my least favorite class. I wonder why we learned limiting reactant before this chapter. Because all that was Okay. Before we say too many swear words, remember we are on video, so. <laughs> it's going on my YouTube channel. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> hey, so if you if you want to say a swear word, just uh, just do it in your mind. Um, but let's solve it, okay? We can do this, guys. We can do hard things. We can do hard things. So I'm going to start with CH4 first. We want to find the moles. Well, can we use the ideal gas law and solve for the number of moles? Sure. So PV equals nRT. Please write that down for methane. Let's plug in. Did it give us pressure of methane? Yeah. 1.65, it gave it to us right there. 1.65 goes here. Did it give us the volume? No. Yeah, it did. 2.8 liters, so 2.8 goes here. Uh, it didn't give us moles, but can we solve for it? Yes. I hope so. What's R? Okay, and what was the temperature? 25 degrees Celsius is what? 298 no. Kelvin. 298 Kelvin. Okay. Oh, I did negative 20. How do you solve for N? Hey, stay with me, guys. I know this is a long problem, but stay with me. How do you solve for N? Okay, we're going to divide by both of these numbers. Both sides? Okay, on this side. They cancel out, that's why we divided it by those. So the number of moles of methane can be found by doing that calculation, 1.65 times 2.8. And divide it by the ideal gas constant, and then divide it by the temperature 298. Okay, are you guys getting that N is equal to 0.19? moles of CH4. Okay, so I know the moles here. 0 0.19 moles of methane. Okay. Now let's do the same thing for oxygen. Okay, we need to know the number of moles of oxygen, so I'm going to do the same thing over here for O2. Again, we're going to use PV equals NRT. That's the ideal gas law. Let's plug in. What was the pressure of oxygen? Here's where it starts talking about oxygen. The pressure was what? 1.25. Okay, what was the volume? Volume, yeah, 35 liters tells us right here. 35. Did it tell us moles? Nope, but we should be able to solve for it. And the temperature, what was the temperature? So 31 plus 273 is 304. Is that what you guys got? Yeah. 304. Okay, now again, we're solving for N. So let's try to get the other terms here away from N. You have to divide by them. Okay, should I do that to both sides? Okay. On the right side, they cancel out because you're dividing by themselves. And so the number of moles of oxygen can be found by taking 1.25 times 35, and then dividing that answer by the universal gas constant, and then dividing it by the temperature of 304 Kelvin. So are you guys getting that number of moles of oxygen is 1.75 moles of O2? Okay. Now, 1.75 moles of oxygen, so 1.75 moles of that guy. Now we learned last chapter that when you have two reactants, one of them is going to run out before the other one. Yeah, we need to figure out what the limiting reactant is, the one that runs out first, is. 
Okay, and then we can use the limiting reactant to go to moles of CO2, and then we can solve. Okay, that's our plan. Are we lost? No. Okay, let's do it. So, how do we do limiting reactant? We put theory. Which one has more moles? <coughs> Oxygen. So we got two moles of O2, and how many moles of methane? One mole of CH4. What is that mole ratio? What's two divided by one? Two. Exactly two. Now, is that what we actually have? No. Nope. So let's put actual. Okay, if I put moles of oxygen on top, do I have to do it on top again? Yeah. Yes. How many moles of oxygen do I have? 1.75 moles of O2 divided by the actual moles of 0.19 moles of methane. Is that equal 9.2? That's huge, right? We, we want it to be 2. This is way too big. So if I added more of the top one, what would happen to this number? Go up. Do we want it to go up? No. no. So we don't need any more of the top one. Now, let's just make sure. What if we added more of the bottom one? This number would go down. Is that what we want? Yes. yes, we need more of the bottom one. So what's our limiting one? CH4 is limiting. Okay. So let's make note of that. This is our limiting reactant. So when you do your stoichiometry, should you base it off of methane or oxygen? Methane. It's our limiting. It's going to run out first. Oh, geez, this is a good problem, isn't it? Okay, so what are we going to start our stoichiometry with? 0.19 moles. Okay, where should we do that? I'm running out of space. I'm going to do it right here. So 0 0.19 moles of CH4. Put it over 1. If you want to get a roadmap out, great. You can use a roadmap. We're at moles of reactant. I need to come across the roadmap and go to moles of a product. So how do I do that? Yeah, I need to do that mole ratio thing. If moles of CH4 is on top, what goes on bottom? Okay. What am I trying to go to? Moles of CO2 is going to go on top. Now, where do I get these numbers from, guys? Balance equation. How many moles of CO2 do I have? One mole of CO2, so that's going to go on top. How many moles of methane? One. Yep. So can I stop there? Yeah. Yes, because my moles of methane cancel out. I'm left with moles of CO2. So isn't it going to be the same? Yeah. 0.19 moles of CO2 is how much I'm going to form. Is that my answer? No, no. still not the answer. Now, can we take this moles of CO2 and plug it in for N right there? Okay, yeah. let's do that. Okay, so I'm just going to rewrite it. I'm going to rewrite it down here, though. Let me see if I can create enough space. I'm going to move this out of the way. Okay, so I've got PV equals NRT. Now, this is for carbon dioxide. The pressure was 2.5. The volume is what we're looking for. The number of moles we just solved for, 0.19. R is 0 0.08206. And what was the temperature? 398. Okay. How do you get V by itself? Divide by 2.5. Do I need to do that to both sides? Okay. On this side, it cancels out, and so V is equal to um, all of that. So 0.19 times 0 0.08206 times 398, and then divide that by 2.5. How many of you guys are getting the volume is equal to 2.5? Four, eight. Now, what is volume measuring in? Liters. Liters. And we're talking about which gas? CO2. CO2. Wow. That was a good problem, wasn't it? Should we see if we got it right? After all of that work, let's make sure we got it right. 2.47. Are we close? Close enough, right? We just rounded a little bit, but uh, man, that's a good problem. Hey. I've got an idea. Yeah. <laughs>
Uh, no. Okay, let me talk for just a second before we end the video. Guys, we can do this, these types of problems. Why was this one so much harder? It's not at STP. So I want to emphasize, if you're not at STP, you've got to use PV equals NRT. You have to. Okay. Hey, can we do hard things? Sure we can. Hey, look how, look how many chemistry skills we just learned or used in that problem. We used stoic geometry. We used limiting reactant. We used balancing chemical equations. We used uh, the ideal gas law. It's incredible, all the stuff that we can put into one problem. Do you think this would be useful for chemists? Yeah, they can figure out how much volume of CO2 you're going to form. It's incredibly useful. So, good problem. Now we've got enough information, guys. You guys are so smart that you guys can do the gas stoichiometry worksheet in your student workbook. Gas stoichiometry worksheet. Get it done. Hopefully this helped. Watch it again if you need to.